want them all to play as good sportsmanship, give our coaches wisdom as they coach, give the officials safety and clarity as they make calls as well, and give us as fans cheer for our team in a positive manner. We thank you for all you do for us. We pray this to your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask that you remain standing and direct your attention to the flag at the south end of the stadium as Tabor College Pep Band honors America with the playing of our national anthem. And good afternoon, sports fans. Welcome to the Blue Jay Network. Lee Waldron joined by Jim Paulus here for today's contest between the Tabor College Blue Jays and the Southwestern Mound Builders. Well, good to see you, Lee. Ready for uh, another KCAC battle. Of course, this game was moved up uh, with the chance of some uh, thunderstorms uh, later in the evening after two Sunday finishes last year, Lee. Um, hopefully we'll get this one in today. Yeah, I was just, just talking about that, having three games pushed to the next day. Oh, it's yeah. probably s smart to move it in when we think we got a window to play it. So here we are. Weather is a little dreary outside, but both teams are here. Kickoff set for just a few minutes away. Jim, we got an interesting matchup this afternoon between two teams that are kind of at a crossroads looking to get some momentum. Yeah, a couple teams that are in the, the beginning of the, or in the middle of the, uh, the standings and Frankly, two teams that had different experiences last week. You know, the Blue Jays' tough loss uh, on the road to Ottawa. Again, struggled on the offensive side of the ball. And then Southwestern, big win at home. They kicked a 50-yard field goal at the as time expired to give Avila their first defeat of the season. And so I'm sure they're up and uh, after that big win last week. And so they're going to be a, a tough foe here for the Blue Jays this afternoon. Yeah, and this is a young team that's uh, headed the right direction. Southwestern has a lot of young recruits, good, talented team, and the Blue Jays are talented as well. But they're, they're definitely looking for that next step. Uh, this, this year's a little unique as far as what, what kind of team do we have on both sides of the ball. And uh, with last week's performance, I know that the Jays are quick to want to reset that and get back out and kind of redetermine kind of the outcome of, of the direction they're headed this season. Sure, yeah, and I think the two things probably to think to watch to th today is one is the continued development of the Blue Jay offense, you know, young guys and, um, you know, a lot of freshmen on the line, new players, and then uh, also I think one of the interesting matchups is going to be the running game of the Southwestern uh, Mountain Builders, one of the, you know, the best run uh, team in the conference. And also the Blue Jays, are run defense is right at the top, too. So those two, are it's going to be quite the clash, and I think that's going to say a lot about how the game will go today. Yeah, you think about the offensive outpouring for this bit mound builders, 511 yards. That's That reminds me a lot of us in the exactly. last few years. And they're doing it on both sides. They're averaging 248 on the ground and then throwing 263. So that's pretty balanced. If you're a no coordinator on, on the plus side, you're going, that's what we want. On a defense, you're going, man, we we got to stop both. we got we got to stop the run. And you got some young guys on here that are putting up some good numbers. Uh, um, you know, we the teams come in with different records. Blue Jays come in right now with the uh, with two and two record, and then Southwestern comes in at four and two. Yeah, this will be a tough tough battle for sure. And uh, the Mount Builders are coming on the field, and so are the Blue Jays. And so we're getting close here uh, to to kickoff. And so, yeah, this will be like I said, both teams are in towards the middle of the standings, and uh, both of these teams want to inch closer towards the top. And so this will be a, a big deal. Uh, this game will say a lot for that. Just right. about. Uh, 3.30 left before we kick off here. Jays are just approaching the field, and we are just going to get into a few things. So what do you think is the, big, the biggest uh, 
need for both teams to, to make sure they can win this game today, Jim? Well, for sure, they, uh, the running back for the, 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 mount, the mound builders, Wyatt, he had 175 yards last week. Uh, he's a guy that's going to be, they're gonna, I'm sure they're going to key off of. Uh, he's had a great season so far right at the top of the conference in several categories and so uh, touchdowns rushing yards and so uh, I'm sure Southwestern really like to get him going soon and so I think that's a key and I think for us it's our quarterbacks you know a couple young you know we got a sophomore and a freshman that, that we've had in and out and who plays consistent today who can get some rhythm we saw some of that against Bethel here a few weeks ago where we saw stretches of some offense that was moving the ball but uh, uh, we need to have more of that today. Uh, didn't seem to have a lot of that last week at Ottawa. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, I look for the defense to, to have a good outing today. Obviously, the goal here is to three and out, right? You're going to have to, but you've got to, you've got to, this first drive will be critical for them. Uh, Southwestern is going to come out probably with the scheme that is going to try to move the ball and really expose the defense here. And um, the, de the defense is a little banged up. They're missing a couple of guys. Uh, thinking about Mel Melvin Williams, oh, really? okay. middle linebacker. So they're gonna they're gonna have a fill in there. So a little bit of schematic things. The Blue Jays are doing a little differently to throw off Southwestern. Has got a senior quarterback. You mentioned that and a talented offense. So I, I like the challenge though. Uh, an offense that is strong versus a defense that is strong. Yep. That should be something to watch. And then for the Blue Jays, you just want to see consistency on the offensive side of the ball. You want them to move it. You want them to see them uh, get both Josh Johnson and Dravion Cooper in the in the mix. Trey McGee, Michael McPeak. Those two young quarterbacks are going to have to command the offense um, yep. up front. You know, there you can make every excuse in the world about injuries, this and that. But the reality is, you've got five guys that have a job to do. Absolutely. And uh, you should take pride in that. You know, I got a guy whether he's bigger or smaller than me, faster. I've got a job to do. And I, I look forward to that challenge. So the the, the high-powered offense versus the Blue Jays' stingy defense, that's going to be a great thing to watch. And then how will our offense respond as far as giving them some the defense a break? Because you can't yeah. just put them on the oh, yeah. field against an offense that's really strong. They're going to wear down. Yeah. That's like they had, they're doing the, the coin toss now. Let's see what, how that goes. Southwestern has won the toss. They've deferred to the Jays. So we'll get a chance to see those uh, Blue Jay, the Blue Jay offense right off the bat. So Captains are shaking hands at the 50-yard line. We're just minutes away here, just about 30 seconds away from kickoff. All righty. Let's go ahead, uh, Lee, and just uh, I'm gonna let's at least get started here with some of the starting lineups, and uh, as we if we need to get into the as we get into the game, finish that off, we sure can. But Absolutely. Let's start with that Blue Jay offense since uh, they are they'll be going to the field first, starting for quarterback. Well, let's start here we, as you can see here the offensive line. I think the, you know, the person that stands out we've talked about a lot is Mitch Gums there from California. He's the senior. He's the anchor. A lot of new players to his right and his left, and so this group again, like you said, they're they're going to need to to play well today. Yeah, there's some young guys. A.J. Williams, he's, this is just his uh, first year of live action. Matt Clarkson is learning on the go. Will Collier, again, he's a transfer that came in last spring, but he's growing as well. And then, actually, there's a sub on, on the guard there. Roy Scott is out today. He's still, so he's got a strained bicep, so there was okay. a substitute there. Roy will not be playing today. Let's look at our position players for the Jays. Of course, Cooper. Uh, a lot of experience, uh, him and Johnson both in towards the top ten and rushing in the conference. Even with our inconsistency at offense, these two guys still bring up a lot of yards. And so, yeah, we'll look for them to do some more of that today. Yep, Barrett Smith at fullback, C.J. Tate, Ryan Stearns at the receiver position. And then your quarterback today will most likely be starting will be Trey McGee from o o Osoe, Florida. He's a freshman, 6'1", 185, but uh, he, he'll switch, switch off with Michael McPeak as well, kind of that tandem system that the Jays have ran for this part of the season. So here we are, just about ready to kick off. Blue Jay return team is ready. Stand up, Blue Jay Nation, and raise your arms and, for the kickoff. And kicking for the bound builders is uh, Patello, a freshman. Again, he's the one that hit that 50-yarder at the at freshman doing that for the win last week. Cooper's going to get it about the 8 little bobble. Oh, nice move. He's going to have some space here on the left side, and he'll be knocked out around the 36-37. That's a great start to the game. So Dravion Cooper, senior running back, comes in with 518 rushing yards, three touchdowns, and is pretty much a threat every time he touches the ball. And so they want to get it in his hands as many times as possible. Talking to Coach uh, Heineman, offensive coordinator for the Jays, it is pivotal that uh, Dravion gets the ball. And obviously that's something that the other team knows too, but Let's see how creative the Jays can get to get it in an explosive back like Cooper's hands. 
they see that they've got them on the return as well. So let's see how that pans out through the rest of the day. And it is Trey McGee that will be behind center, and he's got with him Cooper Johnson and Barrett Smith behind him. Kind of a flex there. And we will start with Cooper. Cuts up, nice move, and he's going to get six, seven yards. Let's run quickly here through the Southwestern uh, defense. At defensive end, Drake Foster, a sophomore. Uh, at the other end, Zach Gray, a junior, number 34. The two tackles, number 92, Courtney Craven, number 64, Grant Newton. At linebacker, Israel uh, Harper, Grant Torgensen, and Clayton Downham. And we'll get the uh, secondary here shortly as the Blue Jays will do second and four. So again, inverted bone for the Jays. Handoff up the middle to Cooper. And that looks like it'll be enough for a first down. So good couple run plays here to start the, uh, the afternoon here for the Blue Jay offense. And just to finish off the uh, bound builder defense in the, at the secondary, to the cornerback, sophomore David White, number 12. Number 24, Micah Jackson. He is a freshman. And it's safety, Crockett and Richard. Blue Jays just inside their territory at their own 49-yard line, first and 10. Hand off to Johnson. Nice big hole again, and he's going to get five, six yards. Starting to see some nice gaps out there, Lee. Yeah, quickly on, uh, you can see what the Jays are trying to do. They're showing their cards here, going with the power run game, using Barrett Smith. There's the fullback, big kid that they like to lead up the hole. And then you've got Johnson and Cooper, both explosive backs, one we call Thunder, one Lightning. So I like the, the play call so far by both coordinator Steve Hyman. And C.J. Tate is out left here. Checking in for the Blue Jays, number six, junior Calvin Tempton. Cooper again on the right side, gets around the edge, and he's going to be able to get that first down, move the chains again as they uh, are inside the, right around the 40-yard line of the mound builders. Calvin Tipton, great job there by the transfer running back leading up the way on that power. Really did a good job of sealing the edge and giving Cooper another couple yards. Boy, this just feels like some of the old Blue Jay rhythm on offense. I'm looking for James Monroe out there. That's just right. Yeah. Very steady and consistent run game by the Jays. Controls the clock, moves the chains, uh, ball security. So far, so good for the Blue Jays here on offense. Look to be an offsides there, but no call. Another big run by the Blue Jays. Johnson, eight-yard run. That'll be second and short as the Blue Jays get close to the 30-yard line, about the 32-yard line of the Mound Builders. Great job there by Will, big Will Collier, the tackle leading up the way. Got him at left tackle now. Looks like the Jays have an extra lineman in there. Play action. Key looks over, oh, right through the hands there. Tended receiver, number 42. So that'll bring up third and short. Seth Swodowski was the intended receiver on that pass play. He was wide open. Um, so the Blue Jays will again have third and two just at the 32 yard line. Trey McKee slips, does get the ball to Cooper, but uh, enough of a confusion there that uh, Mound Builders be able to come in and, and stop that short of the first down. Decision time here for the Blue Jays. Yeah, again, a little surprise. It looked like the D tackle jumped, flinched on that snap. I thought you could have called encroachment. So back to back times there where the aggressive D line of the Mound Builders uh, gets bailed out with no flag there. So fourth and about three yards. A little bit of wind out here, so I think this is in that area where it seems to make sense to go for fourth and short. So they did lose a yard there, so third and three. Empty backfield. Fly sweep to Cooper. He cuts it back, and he's going to get stopped, and that's a big stop for the mound builders. Blue Jays had second and two there, Lee, and unable to, to get to, to move the chains, and that uh, will be a turnover on downs, and we'll see the Blue Jay defense come out. Yeah, Jim, after five run plays in a row that were moving the, the, the sticks easily, getting four or five, six yards a pop, they, they go for the play action, which wasn't a bad call. That's something that they actually had a guy open. So if they complete that, they're, they're moving the chains again. Just tough break, and then they get stalled out two plays later. Go through a few of the offensive starters for Southwestern at quarterback, senior Austin Early, tailback Keyshawn Wyatt. He's, again, the, their 
has gotten a load of yards this year. Had 170 last week. Tight end number 35, Josh Koppelman. And we'll uh, finish up the skill positions here in a minute as the mound builders start first and 10. Early back. Looks deep on the left side. Has a one. And it's broken up. Number 25 by the Blue Jays. Intended for number 14, Woody Banks there, 6'2 freshman. And Ray Peralt with the breakup there. Nice play by the redshirt freshman. But early going going deep oh, right yeah. away, trying to test out those DBs. So to finish out the uh, starters here for the Mountain Builders, wide receiver Woody Banks, number 14. Number one, Carvantes Gates. And uh, we'll get the offensive line here shortly as the Mountain Builders will be second and 10. Wyatt goes up and he gets about two yards. Nice stop there by the Blue Jay defense. The Blue Jays, their linebacker today is Brad Kistner, senior linebacker, all conference player there. Caleb Newschafer, and then starting in place of uh, Melvin Williams, we a Modric Pelican, freshman, six foot two, twenty from Louisville, Texas. So he'll be manning the middle there. Number 52, he's your middle backer today. So big play here for the Blue Jay defense, third and about seven from the Mound Builder 36-yard line. Early's in the backfield with Wyatt. He looks to his left, back towards the middle, and he's able to connect. And a nice play there, about a 12-yard gain, and that'll be first and 10 Mound Builders as they approach midfield. Plenty of time there for <clears throat> Early as he sat in the pocket, and good pocket created, and just completed that pass. And they come to the line right away. Four wide for the Mound Builders. Hand off to Wyatt, a couple moves, and he's able to get past, and he's got some room here. 30-yard line, 20, and he's going to go all the way for a touchdown. Big 53-yard nope. run. No flag, missed tackle there by the D tackle for the Jays, but it will be a quick touchdown for the Mound Builders. So first couple plays, they come out stifling, and after a completion for a first down, Mound Builders strike big. And you, now, you see the explosiveness of the sophomore from Dallas, Texas, number five, Keyshawn Wyatt as he continues his stellar play from last week, adding that 50 yards. Alfredo Patello, the freshman in here for the extra point and kick is up and it is good. And so as we sit here with 10.27 left in the first quarter, blue, the sit mound, will, mound will just take the early lead, 7-0. We'll take a break and be right back. Southwestern leads Tabor 7 to 0. back here, Mound Builders, after doing four and out and getting the ball turned over to them, uh, were able to go about 70 yards, most of it on a 50-yard run by Keyshawn Wyatt, and they will kick off, taking around the two-yard line. Blue Jays bring it up, come across the whole field. Lots of space here. Let's see if he can get that corner all the way to 30. Key stays on his feet and out of bounds. Could have been potentially something late, but uh, nice run back by the Blue Jays. About a 40-yard run back, and uh, that'll be first and 10 Blue Jays. Derek Harper with that return, number 35. Looks like they'll place that at the 41-yard line. He took that from the two, and he ran a long way, Lee, across that field, and then <laughs> probably uh, ran about 60 yards. Yeah. So Blue Jays did move the ball uh, a little bit here that first drive, and let's see if they can get back some of that momentum. Nice, looks like we have a tight formation here. Pistol look with McGee and then Cooper behind him. Cooper gets it, trying to get around, looks for some space and he is gobbled up and that's only gonna be a, that's gonna be about two yard loss by uh, by Cooper and that'll bring up second and 12. 
Looked to be an outside zone play there, and Cooper was just looking for the hole to turn it up and go, and one never showed. Trey McKee still in at quarterback. He gets the, the call in from the sideline. Let's see if the Blue Jays can answer that early touchdown by the Mound Builders. Just under 10 minutes here in this first quarter. McGee now in the shotgun. Looks to pass it. He's pressured. Able to get to his right, get, the little, get some yards, about four or five yards. And that'll bring up third and long, third and seven. Good job there to get just get something, pick up about four and a half yards. Looked like he was looking over here towards Cooper, but he was picked up rather quickly. Well, they'll, they'll mark him a little farther back, third and eight. Barrett Smith checks out. Both Cooper and Johnson in. C.J. Tate out wide to the left. Play action. He's looking for C.J. He's going to have to get rid of. He's pressured. C.J. is. Oh, no. Just outside of his stretch. And that'll bring up fourth down and uh, bring out Sean McComas. Blue Jays strong punter, which he has an opportunity here to turn the field, which is very important for a game like uh, so far where you're really wanting to claim a little momentum back and pin the mound builders back as far as you can. McComas, uh, KCAC special teams player of the week a couple weeks ago. We'll get his first opportunity this afternoon. Good snap. And a low kick that Gets a Blue Jay bounce, picked up, and uh, quickly brought down by the Blue Jays. And the, the Mound Builders are start on their 31-yard line in their second series of the afternoon. Look like number two there, Edric Gonzalez, backup returner, filled in that one for a couple yards. So you mentioned that big run by the Mound Builders, missed tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Could have been uh, uh, maybe a no gain or a one-yard gain, but ended up being over 50. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Big plays will come back to, to get you when you miss tackles. And when you think about it, sometimes they earn it, and sometimes you give them opportunities. And the Jays had a chance to stop the back there just a couple yards past the line of scrimmage. Early again in the shotgun, joined with Wyatt. And uh, three to the left and one to the right, although there's a motion. Early keeps it, runs it off to the left side, has some space, but brought down quickly. Nice uh, tackle. Is that 28? Brad Kistner, senior tackle there. Nice job because uh, it was kind of a quarterback counter. Ran all the, the all the motion was coming to the right here, and the quarterback pulled it back to the left and had a little lane there, but great job by Kistner to make up ground. Two-yard gain. So second and eight. Similar look. This time on the right side, there's three, three wide to the right, one to the left. Look for the fly. Fakes the fly sweep. Going to run option to the left there. Great job by the Jays defending it. Nice job at the point of attack and uh, maybe a yard. Brings up third and long, third and seven. Let's see if the Blue Jays can uh, get this ball back right away. So Blue Jays playing a little bit of uh, secondary games. They've got Nate Beatty walked up on a receiver on that trips look with Devine. And then Kistner walked out now on the inside guy. So Coach Gardner's playing some chess here, trying to get a, get a stop. Jameer Hall and the only safety back deep playing center field. Little roll to the left. Early looks over. And that is picked, picked off. Number Caleb 20. Devine. Caleb Devine, the junior from Altadena, California with the pick. Great job. Uh, roll to the right. They were looking for that deep out. Would love to show you that interception again, but great play by number 27, Caleb Devine, to read the route and come, and come underneath and make the play. Yeah, early was locked on to that uh, receiver the whole play. Let's take a look there right here. Nice break on the ball. Beautiful play by Caleb Devine right on the Blue Jays sideline. So Blue Jays take over in Mount Belder territory on the 44 yard line. 7-0 Southwestern, 7.47 to go. Hand off to Cooper's got a nice lane on the right side and that's gonna be a big 10 yard run. First down Blue Jays. Really love that quick hitter. Yeah, there's been several plays here already where Cooper's gotten a ton of space. First so that, down, though. 
That gets the Blue Jays to the 34 yard line. A little bit different look, three wide receivers out. Handoff again to Cooper. He cuts back, gets a little bit of, of a broken play, but able to get a couple yards. Good job by Dravion Cooper. It was offside eye, power to the right, and he cuts it back and picks up just a couple yards, but more than what was showing him. So second and nine for the Blue Jays. Shotgun, two back, handoff to Josh Johnson up the middle. Nice quick move, and that'll bring up a third and short. Just outside the 25 yard line. At this pace, Jim, I wouldn't be disappointed if we hand the ball off 60 times today. Oh, yeah, they're getting a lot of forward momentum. I mean, you're getting six, seven, eight yards of carry right up the middle, and then the outside is going to open up. So let's, let's just hold on to that ball and see how uh, McGee leads this offense. Gums at center. Johnson and Cooper behind McGee. It's going to be Cooper. But he is taken down he's with a little bit of a loss. That'll bring up, looks like fourth and five. Good play there by the Mount Miller defense. Yeah, able to get across and push that offensive line back. Let's see what the call is here for the Blue Jays. And I did get that number. It's number 62, <clears throat> Mike Marshall out of Chico, California, starting in place of Roy Scott. Marshall plays uh, center as well, but they've got him bumped over to the right guard position today. So Blue Jays are going to go for it. They have him marked about fourth and four on the 29-yard line. McKee drops back. Some pressure and gets it off, and it's caught. He catches it. <clears throat> Johnson makes a catch but falls down about a yard short, so McGee puts that on him. He's probably running for another 20 yards. Yeah, they had him. He was open. And the mound builders again, right around the same area, take over on downs as they still lead 7 0 with 531 left here in the first quarter. Blue Jays defense had a big stop on the last possession. Caleb Devine, the junior from California, with an interception. Let's see if they can continue that success here. Picked off again. Went for a quick uh, kind of a Y pop route there. Faked the handoff to the fullback and looking for the seam on the left side and just missed an interception there. Just a uh, intended receiver was El Edric Gonzalez, a junior. Just out of his reach and Beatty is almost there to make the play and Peralt, if he's coming in, he might have had an interception too. So. <clears throat> Let's see if the mound builders go back to Wyatt here. They'll pitch Option. off to Wyatt. He gets around the, the end, and he's able to make, move it upfield for a first down. No one over here on this side of the field. Kistner had the pitch man there and just missed him. So Number. that moves, moves the chains for the mound builders. They get to the 41-yard line. Keyshawn Wyatt, who's got great speed, got that pitch and just took it the rest of the way to move the chains. <coughs> Hand off to Wyatt. Again, nice. Nice job by the front. Front four of the Blue Jays. They're able to take him down for a yard loss. Great play there by number 91. Paulo Ta'a, junior 6'2", 310 out of Seattle, Washington, making the play from the interior position. Second 11. Early with a couple backs with him. Three wide receivers. Hand off again to Wyatt. And he is taken down quickly again. Nice job. That plays by number 51. Josh Lawasi, six foot two, 45, junior from East Palo Alto, California. And Josh, I believe, made both those plays. Josh is a guy that they brought in as a DN and have since moved him to the interior looking to 
expose his speed on the inside. So great job by Josh. Good to see him flying around for the Blue Jay defense. So got the, the Blue Jay defense in a nice place here, third and nine. Keelan Ellison, Ethan Straw, Tanner Hettenbaugh, and Ben Scott, your 4D lineman currently. Third and nine, early looks back, looks to his left, back towards the middle, and throws it into, into coverage, and that is overthrown, and that'll bring up fourth down. Great job by the Blue Jay defense getting off the field. Really enjoyed the that series. Um, that play specifically was really well defended. You had um, Amadric Blue, the linebacker, back underneath, and then Beatty over the top. Really not a lot of room for Early to put the ball whatsoever. So that'll bring up the punting unit for the, the Mound Builders. Punting for for them, number four, Christian Gordon, senior from Yukon, Oklahoma. And Nate Beatty will be back to receive the punt. Low kicked. That's going to roll. Nice roll for the Mound Builders. It's going to get inside the 10. Geez, that's a very wow. opportunistic bounce for the Mound Builders. Not exactly. But Beatty couldn't have done much there. He no. kicked it away from him. So 324 left. Blue Jays down 7-0. Really the uh, the only uh, offensive uh, replays or the plays of the game is just that one run. And then uh, a great run by Wyatt. He was able to break a tackle at the line of scrimmage and then really just outrun the Blue Jay defense. And that's the difference right now as the Blue Jays start deep in their territory. McGee's still at quarterback. And a short run by the Blue Jays. It's like about two <coughs> yards maybe. Let's see if the Jays offense has the patience to just continue what's been working for them and find the execution in the middle of the field running the football. Trey McKee still in as he gives some directions to the line of scrimmage and to his skill position players. He's under center. Quick handoff. Oh my, that Cooper. was a play that was kind of broken, but Cooper makes the most of it. See if he can get away. He does all the way past the 40 yard line. Big run by Cooper. The fact that we got that ball handed off to him was just a. Yeah, there was some miscommunication back there. and or Unless that's how they drew it up. Yeah. But it uh, looked to me like that could have been disaster. It was supposed to be a fake and a counter. Cooper gets it and does the rest. He's so special in the open field. 41 yard line, Blue Jays take over, have the ball now first down after three plays. Are we messing with something? I mean, slowing something down? Like at the end of the plays, a lot of times it's like jittery. McKee looking deep. Oh, Ooh. right through the hands of C.J. Tate. He had to, made a nice adjustment from his route to, to even make a play on that, but not able to bring it in. So second down, that was a good play call there. One of those balls where you kind of a 50-50 shot. Beatty is very athletic and given another opportunity, probably makes that catch well well thrown. Only the only place it could have been caught was if Beatty would have made it. So second and ten for the Blue Jays. Hand off to Johnson. He looks to go to the right. He's brought down quickly, and that'll bring up third and long. Williams, Cloxon, Matt Cloxon, Gums, Mike Marshall, and Will Collier, your front five currently for the Jays. Derek Harper in at receiver. Nate Beatty, Ryan Stern switches over to the left side with Cooper out wide as well. Trips open, look for the Jays. Well, third and six. Well, about third and seven, actually. On the 44-yard line of the Blue Jays. Blake Burnett in at receiver, excuse me, at the bottom of your screen. Oh, could have easily been picked off. McKee had looked left first, went back to the right side, and uh, nothing there, and that'll be bring up fourth down as McComas comes out for the punt. Yeah, he did a, he did a, he was trying to look, look him off to the left, and then, but the DB over on the right side was just playing man straight up, and very easily could have picked that off, but, uh, did not, fortunately, for the Jays, and now they'll punt. So see if the, the Blue Jays can still keep the field, good field position here as McComas 
Sets up on our 30. Some pressure, hits a high one, fair catch, and that'll be taken in right around the 28 yard line of the Mound Builders. We're going to take a quick short break here, 120 left. Mound Builders still on top, 7 0. Hudson will take over first and 10 from their own 29 yard line. All right, Bound Builders take over. First and 10 for them on the uh, second on the 28 yard line. Kistner showing blitz. Early pulls back. Oh, big hit there by Jameer Hall. And again, that's Mound Builders going for that uh, quick pop to the to the, the quick the quick fade and the quick nine route straight up the scene the go route and Jameer Hall and just showed up right on the scene and made a great hit. Pass intended for number one, Gates, the senior. He was open, uh, unable to gather it in, and as he juggled it, uh, Holland came in to clean up that play, and that'll bring up second and 10. Early, get, or the carry. Wyatt gets it, runs into some traffic, and he'll be brought down quickly. Blue Jay defense, again, except for that one <laughs> big run, they've done a great job on Wyatt, been able to keep him uh, contained uh, inside right around that box, and so, uh, Hopefully that'll continue for the for the Blue Jay defense. Yeah, so far just a missed tackle is the key play so far in this outcome early on. Blue Jay defense is really showing the showing up to the test against a very powerful coming into this game offense for the Mound Builders. So third and nine as the first quarter gets close to winding down here. Early gets rolls to the right. And I think that'll be offsides on the Blue Jays. I, there's been a few of those both sides, and I think finally they've decided to throw the flag on that as both defensive lines have been a little jumpy. All they're doing, well, now they're trying to decide is it a false start or not? Well, that would be advantageous for the Jays as it did look like the D lineman jumped, but if he's enticed, hey, let's take a look here. You know, they're all across football. Well, they're, they're letting the quarterbacks do that clap. And, yeah, uh, 61, the left tackle there flinches just a bit there as it, Keelan Ellison was coming off the right side. They're having a long conversation out there. The clock is running. It shouldn't be. All right. <laughs> they talked about it and they decided. <laughs> that's what, I've never seen them talk about it that long, but, you know, hey, let's get it right. Mm. So 31 seconds. It is 7-0. Mound Builders on top. This will be our final play of the first quarter. Blue Jays trailing 7-0. Much more manageable here for the Mound Builders at third and four. Let's see what they draw up. They have some options here with their, their skill players. They will need to get this off. The play clock is down to five. Fake handoff, early looks. Pressured by Scott. Early's going to have to turn it up and go, and he picks up the first down and more. Finally brought down, but not before he approaches the 50-yard line. Nice play by the senior making a, a play out of that. To, not able to find an open receiver, but uh, scrambles for that first down. Yeah, Ben Scott had that sack and just, just slipped out of his arms. So that'll be the end of the first quarter, and we're going to take a break here. We'll be back. Mountain Builder 7, Blue Jays nothing. Western leads Tabor, seven to zero. Joining us today are special guests, 
are staff members from the MB Foundation. They are seated in the center section and in the Blue Jay Suite. We want to recognize them and thank them for their continued work in encouraging biblical principles of financial stewardship and generosity, resulting in the gathering management and distribution of financial resources for Christ and his kingdom. Thank you, members of the MB Foundation. All right, first and 10 for the mound builders from the 47-yard line. Early's going to hand up up the middle. Quiet on the carry. At the line of scrimmage, maybe just about a half a yard gain there for the running back for the mound builders. Keyshawn Wyatt up the middle, 5'5", 160, sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. So that'll bring up second and nine. Early's in the gun, has Wyatt with him. Two wides on both sides. He's going to hand it off to Wyatt's able to get the nice chunk of yards, and that'll bring up third and short. They'll mark that right about the 45-yard line, third and two. Third and two from the 45, and uh, looked like it could have been offsides there, but they held up and for nice. about a yard, one yard loss on the play after the D linemen were able to jump back. No offsides, and it'll be a fourth down for the mound builders. So it looks like they'll bring out their punting unit. Nate Beatty will go back to return this. Good football game both ways, offensively and defensively. I love the, the the chess match being played between both teams. Punting for the mound builders, number 45, Dalton Rogers, freshman from Wichita, Kansas. He's set up right around the 40. He looks to low line driver. That's uh, going to get a nice roll. And that, again, will get inside the 20-yard line where the Blue Jays will take over. Better field position for the Jays this time around, about the 19-yard line, opposed to their own four last time they touched the ball. So this is a 7-0 deficit for the Jays as they have found a lot of rhythm running the football. Yeah, you know, this reminds me of the Bethel game, Lee, where, you know, there's just been patches of this, and then, then they kind of stall out and have to punt the ball. But hopefully we can string together, instead of just two or three plays, six or seven plays, and get the ball moved down the field. Yeah, definitely. At this point, with giving up a big play, you're, there's a little pressure on the Jays, but we just want to see them continue to move the chains and find progression on the offensive side. Here goes Cooper around the right side. Oh, He's got nice. a lot of running room. He's going to get to the 45-49 yard line, it appears. Another big run for Dravion Cooper, senior running back who is well on his way to another 1,000-yard season as he's entering today was at 5'11". So far is on the verge of almost getting to 100, you would imagine, with some big runs so far. So that gets the Blue Jays into Mount Belger's territory as they're at their 48-yard line. Coach Hyman had no reservations talking about the game plan. Should be offsides there on the Mount Builders. Oh, they're going to surprise call. in and let that play run as it was already snapped. Should be a five-yard runoff moving forward for the Jays. But conversation with Coach Hyman this week, he said, it's no secret. We got to get the ball in Dravion's hands as best yeah. we can because he is our most explosive weapon. That's not a knock on anybody else on the team, but sometimes you just have a guy that's just flat out better with the football. Yeah, he's a guy that's been in this league for several years. He knows. He's uh, run a lot of yards on this field, so I have no problem with them giving him the ball. So that'll bring up first and five after the, the five yards for the offsides. Again, Lee, I was usually they let that play, that we get that free play on that. I'm not sure why they called that dead, but uh, we'll still take the five yards. You never know. Outside zone to the left. Cooper's going to, Johnson oh, nice. leads up. Oh, and there he goes. He's off to the left. One Let's man see. to beat. And he is taken down inside the five-yard line. Two big runs by Cooper this drive as the Blue Jays are set up first and goal. Very impressed with Josh Johnson, unselfishly leading up the hole, making a big block for Dravion Cooper, who just is so hard to bring down in the open field. Let's take a look at that run again. See, Johnson leads up the way. Cooper follows him up, and Johnson 
gives gives a little bit of a push and then here goes Cooper does the rest and just no pursuit for the mound builders big run for Cooper so they're at the four yard line first and goal Barrett Smith leads the way for good job there that's an outside power Cooper with the touchdown so that was uh, that drive was Cooper as he takes the Blue Jays the length of the field two big runs and then he punches it in and the Blue Jays are an extra point away from tying this game. Great drive there. Love the block by the fullback, Barrett Smith, number 40, leading the way, kicking his man out, and it doesn't take much room for Cooper to be able to slide on in. Number four, Austin Smith. Number four, Austin Smith, sophomore kicker for the Jays, looks to tie this game up. The kick is up. And we are tied. So with 11.57 left, we're going to take a short break, and we'll come back 7-7. With 11.57 left to go in the second quarter, the score between Tabor and Southwestern is tied at 7. college football fans the Tabor football store is located in the southeast corner of the stadium they have football apparel in all sizes and will remain open until the end of halftime kicking off for Tabor number four all right we're back here new ball game seven seven as we're uh just under 12 minutes left in the first half. Blue Jays able to get on the scoreboard with a drive that was primarily Cooper running the ball, and Smith gets a, a nice kickoff through the end zone. Great kick by Austin Smith. So the Blue Jays defense will come out with a little bit of a breather after they forced a punt. Another score in the conference. Uh, friends on top of Bethany in the second quarter, 14-13. to 13. And Ottawa early in the game is up 6-0 over Sterling. That's a game to watch. Yeah, a couple teams that are right behind. Seems to be Kansas Wesleyan and everyone else right now. <laughs> Kansas uh, Wesleyan averaging 70 points a game. And completely balanced offense too. We won't even talk about them yet. So let's see how the mountain builders respond. They have uh, three wide receivers out. Early gets it, fake hands off to Wyatt, throws it off to the right side, but taken down real quickly. Now to bring a, sh a short gain by the mound builders. That Kistner with the, the tackle. Tight end there. The wide receiver, Drew Delheit, catches that one. Brad Kistner, the senior from Oak Hills, California, with the nice uh, coverage there on the, the right side of the field. Second and seven. Early brings a man in motion. Wyatt has it, makes one person miss, but taken down again pretty quickly. Third and short. He's able to get some, about three yards. So we'll see if the Blue Jays can get the ball back in the offensive hands after this play. Again, aside from one play, Jim, very impressed with the Blue Jays' front seven, kind of containing early, excuse me, Wyatt, who's been an explosive back in the conference so far. Yeah, not a lot of room there in the middle of the field. 7-7 seven, seven is a score, 10-48 to go in the second quarter. Blue Jays just answered a, with a big touchdown by Dravion Cooper. Hand off to, no, excuse me, Early fakes it. And he is taken down. Um, he's taken down, but he was able to get it away, but incomplete pass, and that'll bring fourth down up. And nice quick three and out by the Blue Jay defense. Keep that Blue Jay momentum. Pressure there by Brad Kistner, senior linebacker, that was quick to pursue the senior quarterback. So back-to-back -back forced punts by the Blue Jay defense has really, really got the momentum switched over. Rogers back to punt again. He's had some nice low line drivers that have gotten some great bounces for him. I'd like to see Beatty get a chance to get the ball in his hands as he's been pretty explosive. This one hangs up a little bit. Takes a Blue Jay bounce. 
<laughs> and it'll be at the, you can't do that. <laughs> it will be at the 40, should Blue Jays will have the ball. They're gonna spot it at the 50, should be the 49. Those of you watching, you are not allowed to bat the football. So the flag did come out. Did they throw a flag? Yeah, there's a flag near, on the near side. Okay, that should actually be a penalty on Southwestern. I know definitely if the offensive guy bats the ball out of bounds or somewhere or the other, it's a penalty. So should, wouldn't be surprised if they move the ball upwards for the Jays here another 10 yards. They're going to chat about it a bit. That was a nice swat, though. <laughs> it's pretty impressive, yeah, on, on the run. We'll see it again here. Yep, you just can't <laughs> really do that. Five-yard penalty, shucks, that doesn't, I feel like that's like a slap on the wrist, man. Like, you should feel that. I think if the referees talk for that long, it's got to be more than five yards. Ten yards at yeah. least. So, opportunistic nonetheless. Blue Jays take over on the 45-yard line. First down. Handoff is to Cooper. He's taken down quickly. Cooper for sure is approaching the 100 yard mark. Picked up his fourth touchdown on the year so far. <clears throat> That'll bring up, looks like second and seven. Trey McKee has stayed in. Johnson and Cooper behind as he's under center. Tate in motion up left to right. Play action. He's got some pressure. McKee gets rid of it, but he's outside of the pocket, so no penalty. So, Jim, it's interesting to see now, if you think uh, about the strategy of the mound builders, they're, they're now starting to stack the line of scrimmage. They're running a five-man line with three linebackers, so just the two corners and one safety. So the big play is potentially there. It looked like the Jays were trying to expose that a little bit, but they're definitely forcing the hand, saying, we've got to stop the run. Yeah, let's see if uh, what kind of uh, adjustments are made both ways here. Get the call in from the sideline. Third and seven. Timeout. Yep. So with 9.30 left, uh, Blue Jays will take a timeout here at third down. We will take a timeout as well. We'll be right back. College J Shop is selling items through halftime by the west entrance of the stadium. Check out their great selection of Tabor College gear. All right, we're back here. 9.30 left in the first half. Blue Jays into Mount Builders territory, but are facing a third and seven. After the timeout, let's see what the Blue Jays drew up. Three wide to the left, one to the right. McKee looks, steps up. He's got some pressure. He's able to get it. Uh, and looks like he's going to go down, and that's going to be about a four-yard loss with the sack. Nice pursuit by the... The front four there of the mound builders. Yeah, great job there. I, I thought for a minute he was going to get outside of that pursuit and get outside and maybe have a chance to complete a pass, but nothing doing there. Well, let's see how what Sean McCombs can do here. He's got the wind. He'll be set up right around the 35-yard line. Let's see if he can get this hung up uh, and maybe even inside the 10-yard line. 
Keep that good field position for the Blue Jays. Kick Great. is up. And he's, let's see how, what kind of bounce we get. And that's going to be a nice Blue Jay bounce. And that's oh, going to be goodness. inside the five yard line. That's nice. clinic tape. What a punt by, and a bounce from McComas there. Puts it at the three yard line. The coffin corner, they, sit, they call it. Nice job. Definitely want to give props to number 41, Patrick Leonard, the freshman long snapper from, uh, let me see if I can get this one right, Murfree, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. That's exactly how you pronounce it. I think they got good yes, cheese yeah. curds there. That's what yeah. I heard. But uh, they, the coaches do rave, and so do the players, about how talented the freshman long snapper is, and that's a position that probably gets a, doesn't get enough attention, or at least praise. Yeah, it'd be great if he have him here for four years doing that. So early is camped out in his own end zone. First and 10 for the mound builders. Hands off. Oh, fakes it. Nice quick pass. And that'll get some little bit of room for the mound builders as they're able to get eight yards. Pass to number one, Gates. Carfontes, Gates, senior 5'10", 180 from Garland, Texas with the reception. Nice play by the senior early, getting that ball out quickly. And that'll bring up second and short. Again, hands up, going, trying to go deep here. Has a man, and that unable to bring it in. Intended receiver. Tanner Spencer, number 10, from Ark City, Kansas. Boy, he had his hands around that, and just not able to bring it in. A little tiny bit underthrown, but uh, probably sh he'll probably tell you he should have had that, and that'll bring up third and short. There's an old saying, but you know how it goes. Yeah. So let's see if I uh, imagine Wyatt might get a chance to touch the ball here. Hand off to Wyatt. Great job there by the Blue Jays D line, but I think that will be enough. Let's see. Well, they they're, they're, the the oh. line judge over here, they're not giving it to him. No, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so that's going to be short. Wow. Nice play by the Blue Jay defense after that quick hitter uh, on first down. Mountain Builders unable to gain any other traction, and so they'll bring out their punting unit. Great job by the interior D-line. I, I think everybody on that sideline assumed that that was a given one yard. And the, the good penetration by the D-line stifled that third down attempt and forces a punt. Good position here for the Blue Jays. They have the wind at their, at their back, so Beatty has a chance to get this. Let's see. Low kick off to the left. A little bit of a mound, render, mound builder bounce, but not too far. And that'll still stay in mound builder territory as the Blue Jays will take over at the 42. So great field position for the Blue Jay offense. Yeah, Blue Jays really need to take advantage of this here as we're getting close to halftime. Set a little over seven minutes and like to see them punch this in and, and take a 14-7 lead. Good football game this afternoon between two good teams. We do have a change of quarterback here as the sophomore number 12, Michael McPeak, is in. First action for him. He's under center. Hands it off to Johnson. Johnson trying to get around that edge. It gets some space, and he's able to get it to the marker. And uh, looks like about a 12, 13-yard gain. Can't be brought down. He stays on his feet all the way to the sideline there. So great job there by Josh Johnson, Jr. from Fontana, California. So again, Michael McPeak is a sophomore from Aurora, Colorado. He's gotten action just on, on in every game. Mm -hmm. So a little later than usual here. Yeah, yeah. But no surprise that he's getting some action, some reps. I don't think they've solidified the number one. No. They may rotate these guys throughout the whole season. So. You know, fall start there on the Jays' offensive line. So that'll push the Blue Jays back, and they'll be first and 15 at the 36-yard line. One thing to note on a positive side is as young and kind of an inexperienced as this offensive line is for the Blue Jays, they haven't been penalized a whole lot. No, I think, yeah, that is that is correct. You haven't seen much of that, whether it holds or offsides or um, movement. McPeak rolls out to his right looking for someone. And uh, that, yeah, there's, I, I thought that defender got there just a tad early. A little bit late on the flag, but I believe the only call here is going to be pass interference. I think the only question may have been whether it was catchable on the, if it was too far. But that, I think that they're going to call that.
Looks like we'll get an explanation here from the head official. They are going to call pass interference. So that'll move the Blue Jays up a bit, but more importantly, give them a first fresh set of downs. Let's see, they'll mark that at the what's that 28 yard line. <laughs> I'm a little surprised. He said spot of the foul. I was pretty sure college is still a 10 yard penalty. Either way, it's a first down. Yeah, I think it's be close either way. So getting close to that red zone. Cooper and Johnson in the backfield. Johnson gets it right up the middle. Falls forward for about, uh, well, it looks like five, six yards. So nice run by, nice first down run by Johnson. Good job up front there by Williams, Cloxon, and Mitch Gums to open up that hole on the left side. Really getting some good blocks on this coming into this game. Really aggressive and talented D line for the mound builders. So second and five for the Blue Jays. Pitch off to Johnson. He's trying to get around the corner. Uh, and it looks like he's just going to be able to fight maybe to back to the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up third down. I'm trying to get him outside, outside the numbers, but great job pursuing that play from the mound builder secondary and the linebacker coming up. And we're lucky to kind of get back to where we started there. Third and about seven yards, uh, six yards actually. CJ Tate, your lone receiver at the bottom of the screen, played pretty much man to man here. So third and six. Cooper, and he's taken down real quickly and that'll bring up fourth down. And I'm, I'm guessing you're gonna see Smith come out. Yep, see if the Blue Jays can take the lead here with a field goal. So just under five minutes now. Blue Jays looking to take their first lead. This will be a 41-yarder from the sophomore Smith. He's pretty much straight on. Has the wind. Kick is up. Plenty of leg. And hits the upright and bounces to the left. Oh, and that'll be man. no good. Right at the tip of the, the upright. And so that will be no good. Tough one. That would look oh, like that was going to be good. It had to, the distance for sure. Let's see. We got a replay here right at the top. Yep. He Man. kicks that ball so high. Jeez. Wow. So Blue Jays move all the way down and put themselves in a position for points on the board, but are unable to take advantage of that field position. So their defense will be tested again with 437 on the clock. So Early's back again with Wyatt. Has four receivers, two on each side. Blue showing a true 4-3 now. Early keeps it, makes a man miss. Great job down. there. Is that Kistner again? Great job on the play by Brad Kistner and a, a, a Modric Blue as well, the linebacker filling in for senior Melvin Williams. 4-16 and counting. So second and seven. Blue, Kistner, and Neuschaefer are the linebackers for the Jays. Early, Early pumps at once. And incomplete, and that, a lot of traffic where he threw that ball, and that'll bring up third down. Good pressure there by the D tackle, Josh Lawasi. Good coverage by Caleb Devine on the play. So another chance for the Jays to get off the field. Yeah, I'd like to see them get another crack here before the before halftime. Third and seven. Two by two formation for the mound builders. Some pressure coming up. Ben Scott comes untouched off the edge for the sack. Nice takedown, and uh, that'll bring up fourth down, and the Blue Jays wig in with the wind. Should get good field position here. Plenty of time, timeouts left for the Blue Jays, hopefully to uh, Ben Scott just to a drive. beats his man off the snap, uses his strength and speed, and just at the straight rush. Take another look at this. Yeah, it just gets no right chance. around. 
And there was a couple of other guys there as well. Could have been worse. The quarterback's lucky because that was a wide open runway. So Rogers sets up at the five yard line. And really low kick. Let's see if that touched anyone. Wow. I really it looked like it was gonna hit a blue jay, but I don't think it did. We'll see if we can get another look at that, but uh I actually think it went right through all those wickets. <laughs> those uh <laughs> that's that's advantageous for sure because that was a kick that was just squirting through. They're gonna call it first down for the Blue Jays. So Reset here, 309 tie game here in the second quarter. I do think, Lee, that you know, the way as this wind starts to gust up more and more, that that's going to be a factor as this game stays close. And Blue Jays need to take care of, uh, take advantage of these three minutes where the wind is with them. Mm -hmm. McPeak in for his second series of the day. Got three behind him. Hand off to Johnson. Johnson pushes forward, and uh, he's going to get it. Good job it. there from the O line to keep pushing. Let's see where they spot that right around the f just inside the 40. That'll bring up second and three. So just under three minutes here, Jim. Uh, Jay's just hoping to get within striking distance for a worst case scenario field goal, but would love to get a touchdown before half, especially since they will be kicking off to start the second half. So they do mark it right at the 40, about second and three. McPeak under center. He's got Barrett behind him. Rolls out, looking for Cooper. Cooper trying to make some people miss, and that'll be, I think that'll, he'll fall forward for a first down, waiting for the indication of the, see where they mark it. And they will move that to the chains, and that'll be first and 10 Blue Jays. Clock stops. Currently, Jays have two timeouts on the on the half remaining. Southwestern has all three of theirs. Yeah, plenty of time here for the Blue Jays. So Cooper's now the wing back with Barrett Smith and Josh Johnson to the right. Cooper, on the carry. Cooper right up the middle. Gets about the 31-yard line. No hurry here. The Jays, uh, they want to control the rest of the clock here and, and put pressure on the mound builders, so... No, with the wind and Smith's leg, we're probably already in the field goal range. So, but again, I'd sure like to see them punch this in. Would be huge. McPeak again under center. Got Cooper, Barrett, Smith, and Johnson behind him. Goes to Cooper. Not a lot of room there, and he's taken down pretty quickly. That'll bring up third and short. Oh. Got some chatter after. Looked a little bit late on that contact from the number six from the mound builders. But uh, the refs did not call that. That was number six, Israel Harper. Clock continues to roll. Right around one minute left. Third and three. And uh, I think the Blue Jays are going to take a timeout. And so... Right at 59 seconds. That'll leave the Blue Jays with one timeout. What do you see here, Lee? Third and three. Um, do you think uh, they'll do a little play action, or do you think they'll just still kind of go with Cooper? And, well, I guess Johnson's not in right now, but maybe Cooper. And Yeah, the thing about it is, Jim, I think uh, Southwestern's going to be keying on that pretty heavily. So I personally wouldn't mind a little rollout to the left, kind of get yourself a trips to that left and uh, run Three different levels of routes. A little out route, maybe a little sit down and just a little comeback far out there. Something to give give some layers for McPeak to, to find somebody. And then obviously, worst case, he has to throw it away and, a, and you attempt another field goal. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think that Southwestern will be keen on um, Dravion Cooper as he has been the one person that continuously has shown them uh, angst in the first half. So we'll see what uh, Coach Hyman and Coach Gardner draw up here for this big third down. You'd love to move the chains and give your offense a chance to put one in the zone. Let's see what the package is. They do have Johnson back in. Third down three. So it's just Johnson and Cooper. 
two receivers to the left, so you have the ability with Johnson to run him out. And he does roll out. Some pressure. McPeak throws it up, and oh. And that will go incomplete. Could have been a few people that could have picked that. Man, Ooh. even even <laughs> he was making me nervous as he was just kind of gingerly putting the ball up on his shoulder looking to throw that to somebody. I thought a D lineman was just going to clock him. So that'll bring up fourth down. Another field goal attempt for Austin Smith. And this one will be, it looks like, what, 48? Yep. Just on the right hash. And it looks like someone got a piece of that, and uh, that'll roll short. So first he hits the left upright, and this one was blocked, and uh, the mound builders will take over here with 45 seconds. Boy, Lee, two two times Blue Jays are in in mound builder territory, not quite in the red zone, but both times right around the 30-yard line, and just stalled drives and missed field goals, and they've come away empty-handed with both of those two drives. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to find another another option because. Uh, they'll be able to get the ball into, into Dravion's hands and, and Josh Johnson even, even showing signs of explosiveness, but the Jays are going to have to find something else to, to keep the Mount Builder defense honest. So Mount Builders do have three timeouts with 45 seconds left. Let's see what they do. Early rolls. Look deep up the middle, and that's picked, picked off. off. Underthrown, and that's picked off by number 25. Ray, Raymond Peralt. Ray Peralt. He's had another couple other good plays. The redshirt freshman from El Cajon, California. And just like that, Blue Jays have the ball again. Really unimpressed with that throw. He uh, kind of underthrew it, and Raymond just stepped underneath it with great coverage. Just stepped right in front of the receiver, and and he's taken down right away. And so let's see if uh, you know Blue Jays get a little more life here. In the second quarter, 38 seconds left. They do have that one timeout. Yep. Early had plenty of time, so he wasn't really pressured. He stepped up uh, off that little short rollout and just threw across his body. And maybe the wind factored in a little bit there with his velocity, but still just Peralt was at the right spot and play, playing that defended um, really well. Maybe an illegal substitution here. Would love to see uh, maybe the Blue Jays take a shot, like yeah. a, a, a just a fade, g give CJ a chance. We're gonna chat about some stuff here. Let's see. So, five-yard penalty for the Jays, flagged for illegal substitution. So that puts them right at midfield. I'm with you, Lee. I like to see uh, we got Michael McPeak in the shotgun. Three wide receivers here on the right, one to the left. Let's let's air one out. Wide open is Derek Harper, and that's going to get him all the way towards the 30-yard line. That'll momentarily stop the clock. 30 seconds, lots of time. Still. Jeez, they were playing. They were just playing everything, letting everything underneath them happen because he was wide open with the deep post. Great call. Clock is rolling now. Peak looks over to the left. Good block there by the tackle. He's going to have to get rid of it. Oh, and almost picked off. And that will stop the clock. 19 seconds left. Let's see where they were right at the 31. Yeah, at this point, Southwestern is definitely playing a, against the touchdown here. Kind of putting their eggs in the basket that they'd rather hold them to a field goal attempt. McPeak, McPeak looks over to the left. He's going to throw the deep corner out there, to, and it's and nice. caught. Nice, and that's that will. We do have a flag in the holding area. Oh, that was a great ball. He threw that post corner up where only Tate could get, and he made a great play on it. I love the aggressiveness by the Jays. And yeah, looks like that that will all come back though. So with 13 seconds left, if that is a hold, that'll put them at the 41, and it is. Right. 
So that pushes, not only takes away the big game, but also pushes the Blue Jays out of field goal range. Thirteen seconds, so right now they're trying to get somewhere around the 30-yard line and give themselves a chance. And with that timeout in their pocket, they still can't throw it in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. So let's see uh, CJ and Harper to the right here, Blake Burnett. Looks okay. like Josh Johnson to the left. And that's oh. Almost picked off. Seven seconds now. So if they still are thinking about a field goal attempt, it'll have to be a quick hitter with seven seconds. Anything more than that, they'll have to be thinking longer. Yeah, at this play, this yeah, third and long, they've they got a quick one, maybe a quick hitter. That's what it is, quick hitter out of bounds. And they will roll, roll out Smith for his third attempt here in this quarter. Well, especially with the win. Yeah, and it, you know, the He's got the leg. Well, he had that 44 what yarder. He hit the top of the post. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That tells you it's not about uh, distance here for him. It's more about blocking up front and uh, accuracy. So this will officially be a 52 yarder. Does have a, the gust of wind behind him. Kick is up, and that is good. Oh, oh my! I think the yes. Wow. Oh, wow. Gave a signal for. Took my hopes away. It What's was up with good. that? And then. Nice attempt there by Austin Smith. Brought it back. So three missed field goals for sophomore Austin Smith. Two, which were great looks. Let's just take a quick replay here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's kind of like a foul ball. If you, if, the, if the, you lose sight of the ball, you know it's good. But that was definitely a, the right call. I think he just wanted to call it good. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So All we're right. going to take a short break. 20 minutes on the clock here. Halftime score is 7-7. Seven to seven. Blue Jays all tied up with the mound builders. Let's hear it for the Tabor College Pet Band.
scores from around college football, the Jayhawks of Kansas trail West Virginia University 38 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Alabama and Arkansas are in a close game, 65 to 24. Michigan leads Maryland 17 to 7. Texas leads Oklahoma 45 to 31. Action from around the KCAC, Sterling leaves Ottawa by a score of 21 to 14.
score update in the Oklahoma-Texas game. Oklahoma trails by only a touchdown, 45-38. Remember, the concession stand located just south of the home bleachers is open until the middle of the fourth quarter. They have Dale sausage, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, and more delicious items. Cash and credit cards are accepted, and students can pay with the money on their J card. Statistics from the first half. First for Southwestern. Keyshawn Wyant has 81 yards on 11 carries. Passing Austin Early is 3 for 12 with two interceptions and 23 yards. For Tabor, Dravion Cooper has 137 yards on 18 carries. Football, with a touchdown. Passing Trey McGee is two for seven for six yards. Josh Johnson has 45 yards on eight carries. Tabor College, Wichita, offers master's degree in business, ministry, and nursing. They are convenient, value-rich, and distinctly Christian. And you don't have to live in Wichita to be enrolled. All students complete their programs online. For Tabor, Hillsboro graduates and alumni, a new 50 to 40% discount off tuition is available. Find out more on Tabor's website. That's Tabor, Wichita, and online for your master's degree. Classes start in January.
update on the Oklahoma Texas game. Score is not it up. All right, welcome back to the Blue Jay Network. Lee Waldron joined by Jim Paulus here. We're just a couple minutes away from starting the second half, Jim. Got a few stats to talk about, but just what off the cuff, what's your initial thoughts on this first half? Well, I just feel like a lot of missed opportunities in that second quarter. You know, uh, we you know, we tied that game at seven. The defense ever since that big run by by Wyatt has been right on point. And uh, but uh, man, we just had some opportunities that second quarter. Got the ball deep a couple times, not quite in the red zone, but uh, you know, didn't connect on some field goals. Didn't, weren't able to punch in for some touchdowns. So. You know, we're, we're still okay. We're in a good spot. We're tied here. But, um, uh, man, we sh I would like to have been up 21-7 for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Just looking at some yards here right away. First of all, this high-powered offense of the Mound Builders comes in 94 yards rushing in the first half and 23 yards passing. So, and, and to go even further there, um, <clears throat> Keyshawn Wyatt has 11 attempts for 81, one of those being a 53, 54-yard touchdown. You take that away, he's averaging 3.8 yards a carry on 10 that's pretty good yeah. defense what do you have there for cooper i know cooper had some big runs in there and cooper is uh well over 100 he's 18 attempts for 137 one touchdown 39 being the long and then johnson right behind him at eight for 45 so the blue jays just under 200 yards in the first half a lot like the recipe that has proved successful for us in the in the past yeah, like we talked in the beginning, could this offense get you know get some chunk yards like they had in the past years? And it seems like that offensive line is playing well today, all those yards. But again, seven points. Uh, you hate to see that many yards with only seven points on the board. So. No, I agree. Uh, the, this Austin Early, who came in averaging just under 300 yards passing, a lot of credit to the Blue Jay defense. He's three for 12 with two picks. Awesome. So he's averaging 1.9 yards uh, in the first half. and. Uh, he's had a couple, just a couple completions there, to, but really just impressed with the Blue Jays' front seven and their their corners and safeties doing a great job. So that's a recipe they're going to have to build on. But you're right, the offense is going to have to break through as hard as this defense is working to keep them uh, pinned back and keep the mound builders the field. But you got to give a lot of credit to the sure. Blue Jays' punt punt team. Absolutely, flipping the script, giving them, making them start off, and then the defense holding their water and forcing them to punt. We've had the ball how many times on our own 50? Yep. So. Let's see. I think we have some highlights here from the first half. We're going to roll yep. some of those and uh, take a take a look at the first two touchdowns. So the first one here is uh, so Keyshawn the, Wyatt. So that missed tackle right there, and then he is loose, uh, and untouched after he gets past that first uh, missed tackle. And that again, that's a big chunk of his yards today. That started early, and the Blue Jays drove back, and then the second quarter, Dravion Cooper gets loose, and then after a couple big brushes before that, he scores to tie the game. Yeah, that that drive was pretty much all him. And so, and the Blue Jays defense steps up here and forces a couple big turnovers. The first one is an interception by number 27, Caleb Devine, who comes underneath this route, makes a beautiful play on the sideline. Able to get that foot down and stay in bounds, and they're able to, to get the ball. The next one here is number 25, Raymond Peralt, picks off Austin Early, comes underneath the uh, uh, underthrown post route and sets up the Blue Jays with great field position as well. So two big picks. And then here's your kick right before just before half hits the top the top of the goal post. So oh, Austin man. Smith, sophomore with a big leg, just barely misses putting them up. So unfortunate break, but here you go. Our tied 7-7 going into the second half. We've got um, Blue Jays kicking off the ball. They did receive the first half. So we're going to take a short break. We'll bring you back for the second half kickoff. All righty. kick off to start the second half number four Austin Smith in to kick off 
back deep for Southwestern, number two, Edric Gonzalez, and number 10, Tanner Spencer. And welcome back to the second half. Tabor College hosting the Southwestern Mound Builders. Austin Smith will kick off. Score is seven to seven, and we're underway. High kick that's gonna sit up about the 23. And nicely covered by the Blue Jays. Good job there on the uh -oh, defense. There goes the flag. That's, man, lots of pushing and shoving, but there was one last one at the end that uh, was up high, and that will move the mound builders up 15, I'm pretty sure. That's the one they usually catch. Guys coming pumped up from halftime on both sides of the ball, but uh, a lot of the action had stopped, and there was one more, and that's the one that got. So Always catch the second one. That may have been like the eighth one, but. So we're starting to get a little rain outside. And we knew this was coming. This was for the early start. Yep, they did. This game was scheduled for seven o'clock kickoff, but due to weather inclination, they decided to move it up. And now we're seeing uh, Mother Nature start to speak a little bit on the variables. So we'll see how that changes anything for both teams. Seven to seven here, 14-53, first play of the second half for the Mound Builders. Wind still kicks up, Southwestern has the wind with them. Wyatt gets it, makes a first person miss, gets around, nice move there, gets across the 40 and is taken out of bounds. And they're well into Blue Jay territory at the 39 yard line. Nice, yeah. nice first run after the, the kickoff and penalty. Yeah, great job there by Keyshawn Wyatt. Shows his explosiveness. So definitely not a good start for the Jays' defense and their special teams. Oh, and they caught the Blue Jays doing some chatting. Oh, and that'll be the way we're really fortunate there. Yeah, they were trying to quick snap us. Oh. <laughs> Let's see what the flag was. That could have been hold, defensive holding maybe. We'll see. Illegal. Um, or shift. They're moving them back, so illegal, ineligible man oh, downfield, okay. so must have been maybe a lineman was thinking it was a run play and took off. So that'll push back the mound builders, first and 15. Blue Jays really overloading that left side right now with the rush and Three. shifting back over, so playing some games up front with the mound builder O-line. Hurley's going to keep it. He's going to pull it back. Great defense there. Hits, hits Jameer Holland in the back. But nice job for him, and uh, that'll bring up second down. Little RPO there, run pass option for Austin Early, who looked like he was going to keep it and then pulled it back and hoping the Blue Jays would have kind of left their assignment. But uh, Jameer Holland with a great job staying on his man there. Second and 15. Swings it out to early. He's got some got some space there, but taken down quickly, and that'll bring up third down. Nice pursuit by the Blue Jay defense. And it'll be about third and seven. Yeah, he still picked up eight yards, though, so puts the mound builders in a very uh, much better spot for this third down opposed to third and long. But still, eight yards, that's tough to get against this stingy defense so far. When he first got that pass out there, there was a lot of green, and so thankfully he wasn't able to break that. Nate Beatty down here playing man-to-man -man on the bottom of your screen. Trips open for the mound builders. He's flushed. Early's going to have to stop oh, and nice. sack there by number 52. Amadric Blue with the big hit. The freshman from Texas filling in for Melvin Williams. Nice. Makes himself known uh, to start the second half. Great job by the linebacker. They looked like they were going to get him at first, and he was able to wiggle out of there. Excuse me, Pelican on that play. A Modric Pelican. Just nowhere to go, swallowed up. Nice. So Rodgers will get back to punt, and he's around just right about the 41-yard line. Nate Beatty is hovering around the 10-yard line. Louisville, Texas is where a Modric Pelican is from, and the, the coaches are excited about him. Nice kick. Another good kick there from the freshman punter. 
They're going to spot it at the six-yard line. Rogers punts, goes out of bounds at the six-yard line. Tabor will take over. So let's see who they roll in for quarterback to start this quarter. Looks like it'll start out with McPeak as he'll come in. He did take the last couple possessions in the second quarter yeah. after Trey McGee started the majority of the game. We'll see if any coach has made adjustments here. Obviously for the mountain builders, it's slowing down. Dravion Cooper, who's had a great game so far. Josh Johnson right behind him. McPeak behind center. Hands off to Cooper. Cooper gets a little more room for the Blue Jays out to the 11-yard line, and that'll be second and five. That puts Cooper over 140 for the afternoon. Brings up second down and six. Rain is now coming down pretty steadily. That will for sure be a factor. Going to have to make sure ball security is number one priority for the Blue Jay offense. Run right up the middle. So that'll get him up to the 15. Third and short here for the Blue Jays. Definitely manageable. The jerseys become a little slippery, though, so that could be something to watch as Cooper is already pretty elusive, but he's going to be even harder to bring down now with the, the water elements on the jerseys. So far, just looking at the weather, it looks like we have some rain, but hopefully no, no storms or no thunder or lightning, which in the past has halted us. We should be able to keep moving. Third and two here for McPeak as he flip-flops Johnson to the right side, offset eye. Hands it to Cooper, cuts back quickly, but he's Cooper stalemated at the line of scrimmage. Down by a host of builders, so that'll bring up uh, Sean McCombs to, to punt. Man, first and five, and then just only a couple more yards the rest of the way. Tough start for the offense. Southwestern is only going to keep packing the box forcing us to do something else with the ball. Yep. Combined, the Blue Jay quarterbacks are only 4-12 for the game. So Comas just inside the goal line, gets it off, does hit that wall of wind, kind of rolls to get a couple more yards for the Blue Jays, but they will stay in Blue Jay territory at the 43-yard line. Yeah, you can definitely see the where that wind factored in on that. Now it's kind of <laughs> hits a certain point there where the, the momentum of the ball just stops. Yeah. So the Blue Jays uh, were, had that to their benefit some points in the first half, and now they're going to have to play into that, especially this quarter. But it'll prove to be something that will be flipped around in the, in yeah. the fourth. We'll definitely forward to that advantage coming up. But uh, let's see what the Blue Jay defense can step up again. They've had a great game so far. Um, except for that first drive, they have just been able to shut down this mound builder offense. Ellison gets out wide, speed rushes. Ooh, oh, big hit there by the Pelican. Another one by Modric. Man, well done. That's two in a row. The last two big plays on the defense have been by the same position, middle linebacker. Uh, Modric Pelican with another great play. So that's always something you expect is the, the old saying, next guy up. So Melvin Williams, Jim, last time we recalled the game, he, he played outstanding. Exactly. He was all over the field, and he actually tweaked his uh, – tweaked his knee a bit. He'll be back next week is the hope, but Pelican stepping in today, doing a fine job. So two yard loss, second and 12. Hand off to the right side. Wyatt, nice move, and he is gonna go up. Oh, that's not Wyatt, but it's nice run up the right side, and that's gonna be a touchdown. No flags there, so that's a dive play to number 29. And that is J Jaquez Coleman, 5'9", 182 freshman from Mansfield, wow. Texas. Nice couple moves there on the right side to get to that sideline, then he was gone. The big play, here it is again, to the right side, and just good blocking there by the receiver, and he's gone once he hits the sideline. Beatty's just too far out of the play. He can't get to him, cut him off. That's tough. Right after a big play from Pelican, Blue Jays give up a big gashing touchdown. So both touchdowns have been 50 yards or more. That's tough. So the extra point is good, and that makes it 14-7. We're going to take a short break, see if the Blue Jays can respond. Score of 14 to 7.
score update to the Texas Oklahoma game. Texas won the game 48 to 45. All right, we're back here. Blue Jays just gave up another big run. Two big runs today. I think both are over 50, Lee, and uh, they will get the ball back and see if they can respond as the, the mound builders are up now 14-7. Yeah, it's actually a 45-yard run, but still, that's a big play, so you got to eliminate those, and Blue Jays' defense, aside from those two plays, have played outstanding. Cooper will take it. Good job there by the Mound Builders. Nice coverage. Special teams unit. Number 31, freshman linebacker Drew Smith from Paola, Kansas, making that play. So the offense will try to come back and uh, unable to get a first down that first drive after the half. McPeak will come back out to lead the unit. And they will start right about the 21-yard line. So second time of today, the Jays are playing from behind, so they'll have to really show some moxie here to move the chains and get, get themselves in a position to equalize the score. McPeak in there again at quarterback. Two out to the right. Dumps it off. Get about four yards on the play. Burnett checks into the game for Harper. Really would love to see the Jays. Oh, Cooper's limping off a little bit. Looks like he got dinked up. Give him a blow, and hopefully he'll be back in a play or two. As you mentioned, I, you know, I think the Mountain Builders are bringing more and more guys in the box. So it's nice <coughs> to see some of those short passes. Nothing else to spread the field out a bit. I mean, they've got eight, eight nine guys in the box almost. So if not, once the safety, safety, but eight guys still. There goes Johnson on the outside. Is able to get across the first down marker. First down, Blue Jays. Nice play off the right side. You've, you've got to think that here, any any play now, the Blue Jays are going to be able to run that play action. And I mean, what they did right before halftime, getting the ball to Harper on that post, and then or getting a, a post corner to C.J. Tate, who's very athletic. He's he's man to man down here at the bottom of your screen. Number 12 is playing defense on him. A nice 10 yard cushion. Good job there, second effort. Just able to get a couple yards. David White, the Tackle DB on the bottom of the screen, playing man-to-man -man on Tate. Ryan Stearns checks in. Second and eight. Blue have Jays show trips here. Have we seen Cooper go back in yet? Or is he still? I don't believe so. So trips open here for McPeak. Drops back, has some nice time. Nice little dink pass over there to Johnson near the Ooh. first down marker. Takes out the. Is that Mr. Howdy? Rob Howdy, <laughs> taking out Rob, but he's okay. He's that's not the first. It's not his first rodeo. <laughs> he's been hit harder than that. Yeah. <laughs> We'll make sure. Hopefully he's not in the concussion protocol or anything like that. So He's an athlete. You should have seen how fast he popped up. Yeah. Well, I think just because he's where he's standing, he had to pop up. So third and one. Blue Jays approaching midfield. Big third down here. Jays really need this one. Johnson back with McPeak. Hand off up the middle. Johnson's going to slice in and nice. pick up the first down. That's all Johnson right there. He did get some contact before he got to the marker, but he's able to get across. And the Blue Jays approaching midfield and have a fresh set of downs as they're at the, their own 46.
Good job there. Josh Johnson with that carry. There is a flag down at the middle of the field. Let's see what the call is. That's right around the inside of the box there, so could be holding. <clears throat> Illegal block is called on number 62, Mike Marshall. So that'll uh, push the Blue Jays back 10 yards to the 39-yard line. Calvin Tipton in there now. Cooper is back in the game. That's good to see that. McPeak drops back. Nice. Right in the middle there for the tight end. Blake Burnett, number 19. With a great catch and move. So that makes it much more manageable. About second and six. That's a great pickup on first down to get back a lot of that penalty. You know, they both backs split out wide, and I think that's extended the, the Mountain Builders defense and opened that nice big pocket in the middle. McPeak doing a great job so far of uh, really just uh, staying in the pocket and finding the open guy. Hands it off to Cooper. Coops around the corner and picks up not quite to the marker. That'll bring up a third and looks like two as they are into Mountain Builder territory. Got to wonder if we're getting close to four down territory, Jim. I know. Usually you would say there's no way, but in a game like this where your offense is showing, you know, spurts of good movement and then also getting stalled out, you kind of got to think that this is, we'll have to see how this third down plays, plays out. Got Cooper and Johnson in. Burnett and Cooper both there on a, with the slot and the wing to the right. Quick, quick. Oh, over, man, he had him and just overthrew him. It was just going to be a comeback, a quick sit-down route by Tate, and he was wide open, and McPeak overthrows him. Punt team comes out for the Jays. Well, now they're going back. Just kidding. Yeah. Again, goes back to kind of the scenario. I think Coach Gardner realizes this is an important drive for this game. Yeah, with 5.53 left in the third quarter, they are going to roll the dice here a bit. I really like that play call because they've been playing off. Oh, it's a great call. CJ's. Sometimes it's been over 10 yards cushion. And he's going to come up short. Nice play there by the mound builders, and they'll take over in downs. So going to Cooper on that quick dive, and they're unable to get it. So the Blue Jays will turn it over on downs. Good penetration by the D line. Linebackers filled in quickly. But again, that third down, Jim, that should have been an easy oh, pass and catch. Yeah. He was wide open. So the Blue Jay defense again needs to show up here as the Blue Jays are down 14-7. Mountain Builders take over just shy of midfield. Yeah, we'll see how the Blue Jays respond after giving up a 45-yard touchdown on their last drive here. Early will take the snap and he's going to hand it off. Same play that just got the big touchdown. And they finally call it dead. <laughs> it's a late, late whistle yeah. there. They are able to get across midfield. So 14 to seven is your score. 520 remaining in the third quarter here in Hillsboro. Pistol look with the fullback to his right early. Second and three. Oh, wow. Oh, ball's, ball's out, up. the ball's out. Wow. That was. That was a lot of contact on that play. Southwestern does retain possession. I wow. wonder where they're going to mark this. So we'll be a first down 
Caleb Newshafer, I believe, is the first Blue Jay that delivers the powerful hit, but then the ball pops up, and Beatty's unable to to grab it. It looks like an old lineman falls on it there. I thought they would mark that back at the point of the fumble, but that's a good point. Yes. So first and ten for the mound builder offense. They're going to hand it off. Oh, there's that man. Goodness, he's no. running hard. He's had a couple good runs now, and he's in the, close to the the red zone there as the Mount Builders will have first and first and 10, the 24-yard line. Jaquez Coleman, they've got him listed at 5'9", 182. Looks a little bigger than that. He's a power back that's really running hard for the Mount Builders. That's been a nice adjustment by them. Good job by the Blue Jay defense to corral him on that play. Getting close here, about four minutes left here in the third quarter. Second and 12. Blue Jays defense forced to kind of dig down here as uh, surely they're a little winded, but they've got to persevere. Josh Lousey and Ethan Straw interior, Keelan Ellison and Ben Scott on the edge now with New Schaefer, Pelican, and Rad Kistner, your front seven for the Jays. Early's going to keep it and throw the end zone. And good coverage there, and that'll be incomplete. Great job there by Raymond Peralt on the coverage. Good play call there by the Mound Builders. Had a single coverage there in the back corner of the end zone. Took a shot. That'll bring up third down. So third and 11, and we've yet to see a field goal attempt. So this is a big play here for the Blue Jay defense. Mound Builders come in now with two receivers to the bottom right. One to top there. They got a pistol look with the fullback to the right of the quarterback. Coleman, who's had a couple big carries. Play clock down to three. Early rolls out to the right. Trying to find some space. And he'll be brought down shy of the first down. Good job on pursuit, Kistner, but Early still able to pick up about nine and a half yards. Let's see what the Mound Builders do here if they try to make this a two-score game. Or will they go for it? It looks like the field goal unit will come out. It seems like an easy call. Again, they won at the buzzer last week against Avila. Gave Avila their first loss of the year. On a field goal. Yeah. And that was a 50-yarder, so this will be right at 33. Kick is up, nice, plenty of leg, and uh, that is good. And so that extends this lead to 17-7, two-score lead. And with 2.43 left, we'll take a break, and we'll be back. Southwestern leads Tabor by a score of 17-7. Remember that the bathrooms are located right next to, to the concession stands south of the home bleachers and is open until the middle of the fourth quarter, the concession stand is. They have Dale sausage, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, and more delicious items. For Southwestern, number 45, Dalton Rogers. Back deep for the Blue Jays, number 35, Derek Harper. And number 31, Dravion Cooper. All right. All right, Blue Jays back, ready to receive. Down 10, just a little short pooch kick. Calvin Tipton will get it just around the 17-yard line. He runs it up right up the middle to the 30-yard line. Blue Jays will take over. Well, Lee, we need to see some points now from the Blue Jay offense as uh, it's been a long time since they've been able to put some points up. Yeah, at some point, you you got to be thinking the Blue Jays are going to have to open it up and at least uh, get creative to get the ball into some other guy's hands or, or get it in Dravion's hands from a different perspective rather than handing it off. I, I'd love the... Uh, 
the couple of pass plays the Blue Jays drew up, but you also have to execute. Yeah. When you when you call something as easy as a quick hitch at the sticks, you got to catch that. That was the detrimental drop overthrow by McPeak last drive, and he's still in there at quarterback. And he had a nice throw to Blake Burnett in the middle of the field. Johnson taking down Johnson. quickly again. Like you said, a lot of people around that line of scrimmage now for the mound builders. Wyatt Bell checks in. Second and nine. Lorenz Plummer checks into the game as well. C.J. Tate. Hand off to Cooper, trying to get some space, but he's taken down. Nice pursuit, and that'll be no gain on that play. Brings up third down and long here for the Blue Jays, and the mound builders feel the momentum swaying on their side. So big play here for the Jays' deep offense as they really need it first down. Hmm. Tate is lined up. Close to the line of scrimmage. He's going to run a, looks like a corner route. Uh oh. And he'll go down. And so that'll bring up fourth down. Punting unit coming out for the Blue Jays. McPeak just couldn't find anyone, and uh, his pocket collapsed eventually, and he went down. Yeah, that's tough. He felt like he had an opportunity to throw that ball right away to C.J. Tate, but again, he had a D.N. coming in his face, so it's easier said than done by me up here. He was pressured. That was, you got to give credit where credit due to the D-line for the Southwestern defense. McComas again. Not, not a good punt at all, and he was, he was pressured there, so Southwestern will get the ball on the 47, 46 yard line. Tell you, with that win, it seems like ever since the second corner, all the action's been to our right as both teams have struggled. So far, all Southwestern here in the second half, we came in and tied seven apiece to start the half. A couple big plays, field goal and a touchdown by Southwestern has the Blue Jays trailing by 10 with, with their defense back on the field. Let's see if uh, the Blue Jays can get another big turnover like they had in that first half. Be nice to get one of those for sure. Hand off to Coleman. Man, runs hard. He sure does. Pursuit Blue Jays <clears throat> came in at his knee there but couldn't bring him down. He's a big tough back and Really giving the Blue Jay defense a tough go here. The freshman from Mansfield, Texas. Oh. So option look there. They fake the dive and early goes to run the option. He pitches and it's fumbled. Big, big switch there up for the Jay defense as it'll now be, that's a five yard loss. All right, let's see if this defense can take advantage of that. And that will tick down the third quarter. So after three, Southwestern's up 17-7. We'll be back here for the fourth quarter. At the end of three quarters, Southwestern leads Tabor by a score of 17 to seven. like to give a shout out to the Tabor College cheerleading team for all their hard work and dedication. Second down. 
Second and 15 for the Mound Builders. First play of the fourth quarter. Early has a couple back with him. Hand off to Walker. Oh, no, he keeps it. Quick pass out to the left. Blue Jays gobble that up, and it looks like about a five-yard gain. So that'll bring up, looks like right back to the original marker, third and ten. And this is a big play here because yep. uh, the, the wind is, is in the Blue Jays' favor now. The kick will have to go into it if they do attempt a field goal. So would love to get a loss on this play or at least stalemate them at the line of scrimmage. Don't give them any yards. Yeah, my guess is if Southwestern's able to get five or six here, it'll be it'll be four down territory, but we'll see. You wonder if they'll give it to Jacquez Coleman here, the big back, the freshman back who's had a great second half. Those are two good options for early. He has back with him. It's going to be a delay of game, I believe, on that one. So that'll push back. Those five yards they just gained. And that's completely on the quarterback there. <clears throat> Third and 15. Blue Jays look to be just bringing the four, but showing blitz. 4-3 cover two look here. Early looks. He steps up into the pocket. Surprised there's not a flag there. He yeah. was close to being a forward lateral. He looked like he wanted to take off, but I think he thought otherwise. So that'll bring out the punting unit from the mound builders. Rogers comes out. He'll be going into the wind. Yeah, Rogers done a pretty good job with this rugby style punt so far. So he's not listed as the number one punter. That's Christian Gordon. Haven't seen his number today, but this freshman has done a pretty good job with this rugby style where he runs to the right and then eventually kind of squibs it. And again, another great roll for them, and uh, they're able to down that right around the five, six-yard line. Blue Jays will have a lot of territory to cover here. They'll have to go 96, mm. down by 10, but they do have the wind aiding their drive here, so that'll make things a little easier on the offense when they want to pass, but it won't be given to them. This mound builder defense has been pretty stingy in the second half, and Quarterback situation appears to be that we will see Michael McPeak again. So have no have not seen Trey McGee in the second half so far. And you gotta wonder if that has to do with the, the throwing element. Yep. You know, being down ten points now with thirteen and a half minutes. Man, Cooper stuck right there. And that'll be Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Grant Torgetson with that play, the linebacker, 5'10", 220, with making a great stop. Try to get Cooper coming around from the, the wing position. All right, second and nine. Another run up the middle. Gets a little bit of yards, but that'll bring up third and five. Big third down for the Blue Jay offense. You don't have to pass it here, but you don't have to run it either. So you've got some options, but you definitely got to figure out a way to move the chains at this point in the ball game. Trying to get the swinger out there to Cooper, but he was again a man in his face. So that'll bring out the punting unit. Blue Jays running out of time here, 12 11 left in the game, down 10, and they are going to give the ball back. 
Hopefully uh, McComas can get a nice kick here with the wind. Mm. Punt team will have to hold down here at the punt defense of the Malamuters has done a pretty good job of forcing the issue the last couple times the Blue Jays have had to punt. Oh, the ball's great. gonna hang in the air. Blue Jays got a good, a little bit of a roll. Gets it across the 50. Not the best punt for Sean, um, but that will give the ball back to Mount, the Mound Builders. 12 minutes even here left in the game. You got to figure that Blue Jay defense is getting a little winded here. They've been on the field an awful lot the second half. Yeah, for sure. They have played a lot of football. That's something we said was going to have to be stopped. You're going to have to give them a blow because this offense is pretty potent and the Blue Jays defense, you take away two plays, has really played great. Let's see if they can contain Jaquez Coleman. It goes to Wyatt. Nice. Kistner, Brad Man. Kistner making that play. Great job by the senior linebacker. Able to bring him down after just at only about two yards. Just shy of midfield. Peralt playing man-to-man -man coverage down here. Goes in motion with number 15. Early's going to look to run the keep it. And yeah, nice tackle by Peralt there. As he came with the motion, he was waiting. Good football play there by Raymond Peralt, who's got one interception on the day already. Plays his corner position well for the tackling. Also a couple pass defense during the game. Yeah, great game. All right, third and six. See if the Blue Jays can get that ball right back. Big play here for the Blue Jay defense. Showing blitz. Man in motion. They're going to fake the handoff, give it to Coleman, who's met there by the linebacker. Nice. Kessner again involved. And so, that'll bring out the punting unit. So they'll have to punt. At this point, though, the, the Mound Builders are more than happy to play that game, to run a few plays and punt it, knowing that their defense is playing so well and that at this point the Blue Jays' offense has not shown any signs of momentum in the second half. Yeah, I'm not – if they have a first down, there isn't very many of them, that's for sure. Beatty hangs out right around the 25-yard line. All kinds oh, they of brought pressure. The Punt block team on that, hoping to get a piece, but it does help their team out as they're going to start in much better field position. So great job by Coach Gardner trying to bring a little pressure there. They almost blocked it. That would have been very big if we could have gotten that and a bounce it even. You never know what can happen there, Jim. Yeah, so the ball really only moves up the field about 18, 19 yards. So, but the Blue Jays have some work to do. They haven't had a all kinds of trouble this second half moving the ball both in the air and the ground. Four receivers now for the Jays. Look to them to maybe throw a little bit here. Gets it to Burnett. Would like to see a little urgency out of the Blue Jay offense here. Maybe a little no huddle. We are under 10 minutes. They need, need two scores. You know, Blue Jays have missed three field goals today, Jim, but the, you know, one of those was, I was oh. blocked. One hit the top of the upright, and then the one right before half, was that was a tough one as well. Oh, Cooper's gobbled up again. Just doing a great job mm. containing him so far in the second half. You got to give a lot of credit to the adjustments that uh, the defensive coordinator for the Mound Builders has made in the second half, and the Blue Jays still have time to counter. They're just gonna, they just need to get a big play. So third and five. Trips open here. Harper, C.J. Tate. 
Blake Burnett to the to the top of your screen. Quick slant there to number 11. It's going to move the chains. Oh, that's going to be. He was bobbling it. And he wasn't uh. able to gather it. Let's see what. And the punting Sin unit will come out. I believe Sincere Jackson, intended receiver for that. I thought he had it. And he, he had good position as he on that quick slant, but unable to gather. Let's take another look here. Yeah, definitely juggling it. Oh, man. Not able you, to gather. You got to make that catch. Mm. At this point in the game, those are plays that have to be made if you're going to keep in it. That's two big plays, one by the quarterback and one by the receiver now that the Blue Jays have been unforced. That's a good punt there. Oh, nice first move. And brought down right around the 40-yard line. Good contact there by McComas, getting a, getting a good pop on the ball. Coverage team gave up a little bit of yards there, but still mm. the worst field position that uh, the mound builders have had so far this, game, this second half. 8.32 on the clock, Jim. The defense is going to have mm. to force a turnover. Would love to see a big play here, uh, a sack or a fumble, something. The urgency it has to be really, really high, but you can't overplay and put yourself in a situation where you do too much. And um, the mound builders capitalize on a, B, a big play on, for their own. Yeah, time is definitely running short. 8.32 left. Early keeps it, kicks it out to Wyatt. And he's brought down after about a three, four yard gain. Kistner again. Well, he's got to be double digit sack, uh, tackles for sure. He's a tough man to block, that's for sure. But it picks up five yards, four yards on that play. And the clock continues to run. Yep, Southwestern in no rush to get this started. Play clock still over 20. Another one to Wyatt. He's crossed the first down mark across midfield. That's the first time that he's found a little room. So they go to him, and he's been their bell cow most of the season. Mm. Picks up the first down. So fresh set of downs as they are into Blue Jay territory. First and 10, Blue Jay defense has to be tired. Josh Lousy meets uh, Wyatt at the line of scrimmage there. Maybe picks up a yard. Nice play. Officials trying to keep as dry a football as possible out there. No, let that thing get wet. So yeah, we're okay with that, yeah. <laughs> Shot of the Pender Pendery Athletic Center there. The Blue Jays Suite, which is a great facility here on campus. Great place to be right now with the rain coming down. Shotgun pass. Early's going to throw it oh. deep. He's got someone. No. Oh. Well, just a matter of time before they were going to strike with that play action pass. And, mm, and there play. it is. Yep. Nice. Catch and throw to Donnie Ebanks, senior wide receiver from Dallas, Texas. I don't think Caleb Devine was lured there, but he definitely probably wasn't assuming they would toss it deep. And the Banks just does a great job of running by him and making a great catch for the first big completion on the day for Early, who comes in averaging nearly 300 yards. So Southwestern's in the red zone. Blue Jays desperately need a stop here. Holland with the takedown quickly. Good job by Jameer Holland making that play. Yeah, Jim, there's a couple things that you're going to, when you watch film, you're just, just going to make you sick, thinking about just a handful of things if you would have changed. This well, game is completely a different story. Well, that, again, that second quarter where we had the ball, I think inside the 30 three times and uh, unable to put any points on the board for on those three drives. So, Still within a it's two-possession game here, and you'd like to keep it that way. Worst case, holding Southwestern to a field goal. And there's a run right up the middle, and that's going to be touchdown Southwestern. Mm -hmm. 
So that makes the score 23 to 7. Looks like the officials are still thinking about it, but they're going to call it a touchdown. Let's see it again, just right up the gut here. Nate Beatty unable to make the play, and Jameer Hall and two yeah. safeties. When you're asking your safeties Ooh. to make the play at the goal line, that's tough. So Nice hard run. Good block there by number 69 on Kistner. Hmm. That would be the center of the guard there for... Kick is up. Left guard, Yancey oh, Van Vanosdale making a great block there. So we're going to take a break here. 550 left. Southwestern in command, 24 to 7. Southwestern leads Tabor by a score of 24 to 7. Next Saturday, October 13th, the Tabor College football team will be traveling to Salina, Kansas to play the Kansas Wesleyan University Coyotes. Kickoff is scheduled for 1.30 p.m. For the Blue Jays, number 35, Derek Harper, and number 31, Dravion Cooper. Kicking off for Southwestern, number 45, Dalton Rogers. And welcome back, Blue Jay Network. Blue Jays trail by a score of 24 to 7 with just under six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Southwestern just scored again, and now with the high pooching kick. They'll take over now at about the 37-yard line with just a desperate or an urgency to move the ball and, and really give themselves a chance here, Jim. They've just had no signs of life from the offensive side of the ball here in the second half. Yeah, it's been tough sledding for the offense, but particularly the run game that showed so much promise in that first half, just not been able to get going here in the second half. Whatever adjustments that were made by the mound builders at the break have sure been effective. So let's see if the playbook gets open just a bit here. McPeak is back in the shotgun, drops back. Going to have to get rid of it. And basically throws it away. No, no, they're going to call a catch, you know. Oh, no. Yep, the oh, wow, back, the nice. back judge calls it a catch right there at the... 45, but there is a flag. I was looking at the wrong official. The back back judge there called that catch, but this looks like it could be jeopardy of a holding call. Or maybe a, a lineman downfield. Yeah. Mm. Just tough, Jim. It's uh, as soon as we seem like we're given a Jeez. given a door open, it just closes up on this offense so far, and especially in the second half. Mm. Yeah, once you get a quarterback moving like that, there's always that that danger of having a, a lineman get too far away, and that's what happened. That'll bring up first and 15. McPeak's going to throw it deep there. Oh, intended for C.J. Tate. Good coverage there. That'll bring up second and 15. Four wide receivers in there for the Blue Jay offense. McPeak, who's been the Blue Jays quarterback most of the second half, looks to move the chains here to find an open man. He'll take the snap. He's going to drop back. Looking to his He's going to throw it deep to Harper. A little contact on the play. That'll bring up third down. There was a little contact there. I was surprised they let that go. I, Maybe they assumed the ball is just not a not catchable, but they were definitely letting the hands 
one of the coaches looking for an explanation. And so third and long here for the Blue Jays, 5.20 left as they are down 24-7. McPeak backs up. He's going to throw it. Nice Caught catch. there by Harper. Great catch there by the receiver. Not quite to a first down, but manageable here, and that'll bring up fourth and short. We'll catch up some other scores. Friends with a big victory over Bethany, 42 to 26. Oh, well, that's a good win for them. Yeah, they've struggled out of the, out of the box. It says Sterling and Ottawa are playing today. Fourth and one here for the Jays' offense. McPeak is going to throw up the fade again to Tate. Just out of reach, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Yeah, and that's Sterling Ottawa game. They're in the third quarter. Sterling on top, 28-26, so a tight wow. one for that. It's a great game. Later on, Kansas Wesleyan will be hosting St. Mary's, and Bethel will host McPherson as Bethel's having their fall festival homecoming uh, Celebrations on their campus today, so we'll see how that football game turns out as well. Here it's uh, right at the five minute mark. Blue Jays down 24 7, really struggled this second half. Went into the break tied at seven, but uh, have not been able to get on the board this second half. And Southwestern in control. Early gets it, hands it off to Wyatt. He bounces out to the left. Kistner with yet another tackle. Yeah, just been just too much. You know, and one of the big variables um, of change that Southwestern made in the second half was getting this young man, Jaquez, Jaquil, excuse me, Coleman, the running back, 5'9", 182, the ball. Yeah. The first couple drives, he was just the difference maker. He had the big touchdown run, uh, was just getting 10, 15 yards a pop, and just just was a tough back to bring down for the Jays, and he was fresh. We're going to take, there's an injury timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. The Tabor College volleyball team will be playing the University of St. Mary in Leavenworth, Kansas, this Tuesday, October 9th. And the varsity match will begin at 7 p.m. on the campus of St. Mary's. One week from today... Saturday, October 13th, the Blue Jay volleyball team will host Kansas Wesleyan University. The JV match will begin at 1.30, followed by the varsity match at 3 p.m. in the Tabor Gym. All right, we're back here, second and eight. 425 and counting. Southwestern, no urgency to snap the ball early as the clock is running down. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Couple scores also to update the Blue Jay fans of women's volleyball team. A victory last night against Oklahoma Wesleyan, 3-0. Nice pass, and that'll be a completion. Clock will stop briefly. So Southwestern is not about to take the gas off yet. They're still trying to put a put the ball in the end zone, up by 17, four minutes and counting. A couple other scores from last night: women's soccer with another victory in conference, defeating St. Mary's two to one. Yeah, they are now is it five and one. In conference, yeah, they only lost is to Oklahoma Wesleyan, and men's the men's soccer team won in the 85th minute last night. Yeah, they took a victory 1-0. They needed that one, so that was a big win for them. Men's basketball had a little scrimmage inner squad this morning, so basketball season is approaching. So in this week, volleyball will travel to St. Mary's on Tuesday, and. Men's and women's soccer will be at Kansas Wesleyan on Wednesday. And then on Saturday, this football team will travel up to Salina to take on Kansas Wesleyan, who have early in the season have 
Look like a very tough yes, opponent. Yeah. They've They're playing extremely well, both sides of the ball. Yeah, put up some big numbers early. Oh. I think uh, Ken Swesson is right up there in the national statistics for takeaways. But offensively, they're putting up big yards, big points. So, yeah, they're, they're establishing themselves as one of the top teams in the conference, and the Jays will be in Salina next week, and then they turn around and, and homecoming the following week as they host Sterling. Coming up two weeks, so third and ten. As the Mountain Builders are looking to throw the ball even up uh, 17 here. They'll hand it off there. Wyatt stopped, and that'll bring up fourth and five. Clock continues to tick here, two and a half minutes. Also next Saturday here in Hillsboro, the, the women's volleyball team will host Kansas Wesleyan as well. Fourth and five, the Southwestern chooses to go for it here instead of kicking into the wind. As they're at the 28 yard line, looking to put some more points on the board. Early, Wyatt gets it and he will be held up and that'll be a turnover on downs. So turnover on downs here. Blue Jays have two minutes to try to salvage something, right? They, there's always something to play for. So you'd love to see them maybe move the chains a few times, get them in a position. They ha do have three timeouts. If they score, kick an onside kick, uh, there's a lot to play for in a situation like this. Yep, still a lot of young guys on the field. Get some experience. McPeak looks. Man, he's going to throw that up to Harper. Tried to make a play out of bounds, but he's going to come up just short. So after today, this will move the Blue Jays to two and three overall, and one and three in conference. And then Kansas, uh, excuse me, Southwestern will move to five and two overall with a four and two conference record. With big games coming up for both teams. One forty-one left. Again, McPeak drops back. Quick pass out to the left. It's caught. Tate with the reception. Close to the marker. I think it's going to be just a tad short. So third and one. In and out of the hands of C.J. Tate, almost picked off. We'll bring up fourth down for the Blue Jay offense. Fourth and one, they will line up here. A draw to Johnson. See what they Looks like it. forward progress. I believe they're going to give him it because he was stalemated and then bounced back, but I believe he picked up the first down. He is down. So they did give the mark to Johnson. Is he slow to get up and they'll So Johnson is able to walk off under his own power. That's always a big Thing when an athlete is able to walk himself off, maybe he just got banged up. Uh, big piece of this Blue Jay offense, so they'll need him down the stretch. Oh, 
Oh. Mm. Ooh. Intended for Derek Harper on that post that he was. So second and 10 now for the Blue Jay offense. Man, McPeak is just, uh, well, he was hit when he threw it, but he was looking for Burnett, it looked like, on that play. Brings up third and 10. The clock is slow going now, huh? Both teams throwing it now more than they had the whole game. <laughs> Caught. Great catch there by Derek Harper. Big, big catch. Good ball in tight coverage, though. But Harper makes the play, and he's going to have to come out for a, a play. It's Ryan Stern subs in for Harper. Always something to play for. Would love to see the Blue Jays drive down here and score a touchdown. One minute left here. This offense is ever developing, still growing, and they need every bit of experience they can get. So even in a situation like this, there's always something to learn from. Oh. Seemed like that ball slipped out of his hand. Bring up second and 10. You know, Jim, I have noticed the college Especially the KCAC, they seem to have a, a little uh, looser rein on the old roughing the passer call than, than the NFL. Nice job yeah. getting out of that a little soon there. I thought maybe they could flag him for early contact, but no. Been equally surprised by some of the roughing the passer calls this year in the NFL. Yeah, I think, that'll, I think the penalty will swing back on that a little bit. Third and ten. McPeak has taken some shots here. So he's trying to move the Blue Jays here. Add a little bit to the score. 40 seconds left. Blue Jays with all three timeouts. He's going to swing it. So it'll be fourth down now for the Blue Jay offense. This should be a play where uh, McPeak's going to look to throw it past the 10-yard marker, maybe an out, or the post has been something he's liked so far with that inside guy. Harper is is back in the game. He made a big catch a few plays back. C.J. Tate. Got some time. McPeak rolls to the right. No. Oh. Like Tate had a chance to catch it, just couldn't bring it in. So that'll do it. Mm. As Southwestern should just take a knee here to end the ball game. Jim, a lot of work to be done, but still yep. at halftime it's seven to seven, and the Blue Jays um, mm. go back to like you said that second quarter when they had three opportunities inside their own 35-yard line and they're unable to capitalize. Mm. 27 seconds on the clock. Early will take the snap from the shotgun and he'll take a knee. And that should do it. Mountain Builders, impressive victory coming on the road. Two games in a row, they defeat Avila last week, come on the road here, and they defeat your Blue Jays by a score of 24 to seven, outscoring the Blue Jays 17 to zero in the second half. And we will see you back here at Joel Ween Stadium in two weeks for homecoming as the Blue Jays will host Sterling. Again, Blue Jays will be on the road next week at Kansas Wesleyan. 
Thank you all for joining us, and we will uh, see you again. Thanks.